What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Today, we're going to be addressing a few comments and also talking about the top five places where your enemy might catch you slipping. But before we get into that, I already recorded this video yesterday. This intro is being made this morning because I want to address a few things and show a few things. But people, man, people were tripping, tripping in that 6 9 video just because I simply stated you know, a price range of what I typically make as of lately. There's a lot of people that were in the comments section saying, man, why are you donating to this dude? He's making that much money, this, that, and the third. Man, he don't make that much money. Look, when I said that, it had nothing to do with uh, trying to flex on camera. All right, I wasn't flexing at all. I was simply stating the fact that even if I had no money at all, 10K ain't nothing, and I'm not going to freaking try to take someone's life in the middle of what? What was it? Times Square. Let alone, Times Square for 10K, okay? That's the stupidest thing. Man, I wouldn't even, if, you know, even a professional freaking hitman ain't going to do something in the middle of Times Square. So that's all I was saying. And people, they, they just missed the whole freaking point. They're hating jealous individuals. You know, why can't you just be happy for a brother? I don't know. I really don't understand that, but check it out. Uh, I'm not making my I'm not making the majority of my money on freaking YouTube. I mean, you can go to socialblade.com right now and see how much, pretty much see how much I make from YouTube. Okay, and I'll tell you this: the majority of my money is not coming from YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. All of my true viewers that have been watching my content, they know what kind of major deals I've landed. Me and my father have landed in the art business. They know, you know. But these other guys, man, they're probably just now entering the channel. Because it was a title for 6 9 and they want to run their freaking mouth. They ain't true fans. They ain't true audience members. And they also say, hey, look, why you donate to this dude? Look, why do you pay $70 to go to a concert to see your favorite entertainer? Huh? That's donating to him for real. It's because you enjoy his content. You want to see his content. That's the same way donations work in YouTube. Even though... Uh, people got thousands of dollars. They still throw money to like, you know, there's plenty of youtubers out there that got million subscribers You know, they're making bank, but they still donate for the simple fact that they're true fans Or they want to get their freaking message across on the chat. You know what I mean? So shut your freaking mouth. Stop hating man Don't clock my wallet as someone said in the comment section. I was simply stating the fact that 10k ain't nothing man So don't be stupid anybody and yes, I know Trust and believe. I know, okay? Because just the other day uh, on the news, someone was killed for a pair of sneakers. That stuff does happen, okay? It really does happen. 10K to someone else is a ton of money. It could be a come up for them. You know what I mean? It could be a come up. They go buy their self a little whatever, 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 and flip that, and it's a come up. But at the same time, when you have it, you will soon enough realize that 10K is nothing. You know what I mean? It really isn't. So if y'all are ever in a position to do something like that for just a funky 10K, think again, man. You know what I mean? Think again. But yeah, I work my butt off, man. I've been working my butt off ever since I left the penitentiary. Started off at a sub shop, okay? And it's been growing ever since. I don't come out here to show out. I could go to my bank and grab stacks of cash and throw it at the camera like most of these rappers do. But that's not me. That's not me, man. I got kids. All my cash goes to them. I go and flex in Toys R Us, you know? I, I flex at the mall buying them tennis shoes. And speaking of that, uh, someone sent me some packages yesterday and I feel as though I wanna show it to you really quick before we get into the topic at hand. From Wendell in North Carolina. Check it out, y'all. It's about time someone painted me a, a predator thing, man. This is awesome, I'm gonna frame it up. I cannot wait to frame this puppy up and put it in uh, well, I'm not going to put it in here. I don't have no room on the walls. But I'm definitely going to put it in my new house whenever I get that. Amazing, man. Predators. I got that. I got this picture right above me. You can't see it, but it's a poster. I got the same thing right above me. You did excellent job, uh, Wendell. Excellent job. Thank you very much, man. <clears throat> Next. This comes from... It doesn't say on the... It doesn't say on the box, but I know who it comes from, okay? Uh, they got my daughter's Michael Kors shoes. Unbelievable, man. <clears throat> this is unbelievable. Beautiful tennis shoes or uh, boots. Michael Kors at that. Look at the little bow on that thing. It's awesome. Thank you very much. I also sent some Hello Kitty shoes as well. 
Uh, my kids absolutely love it. They were so thrilled to see some more shoes. I mean, that's that's what they live for now, you know, clothes, shoes, and not so much of toys, but more of along the lines of fashion. One of my daughters loved the P PlayStation. She plays that on a regular basis, you know. But thank you for sending those packages. I mean, it, it just it just means the world to me and my family to see people supporting us like this. It's absolutely unbelievable. It's unbelievable, you know. And my parents, you know, they're shocked too. Uh, we get pack, uh, my father picks my packages up for me because he's in the post office every day shipping boards to all over the world and I don't have time to make it to the post office sometimes so he grabs my packages and he cannot believe that people you know just random people send this stuff to me it's it's just it's a huge it's, it's a shock I can only imagine what these other huge major youtubers get in their PO boxes I'm sure it's a lot like uh, the Bell Life. I don't know if y'all ever heard of that YouTube channel, The Bell Life. Uh, it's about these two brothers that just kind of do harm to each other. I watch a few of them, man. The first one I watched, the dude's getting hit with a, a bull whip. <laughs> but they have some crazy package times, you know what I mean? Like, they'll have their whole dining table filled with packages from their viewers. It's, it's unbelievable. But anyways, let's get to the topic at hand. Top five places where your enemy might catch you slipping, all right? Fact of the matter is there's many, many different scenarios where your enemy can get at you, all right? First things first, do not think you're untouchable. I don't care if you go and watch my video on how to perfect the ghost mode. It doesn't matter. Sooner or later, someone's going to see you, spot you, social media, whatever the case is, and they're going to get you. It could take days, weeks, months, or years, but your enemy, he don't ever forget, especially if it's something crazy that you did to the individual. Now there's a famous saying that I'm sure a lot of you have already heard, okay? There's no such thing as a halfway crook. And that is absolutely correct, okay? Either you're in it or you're not. And the reason why, you know, I'm, I'm coming this route today is because I've been watching and cruising around YouTube world. Yeah, YouTube world took me to some of these rap videos where rap artists were getting caught up. They run their mouth, you know, in their in their tracks, and then sooner or later they get caught up. Like today, I watched one where the dude got caught up in a barber shop. You know what I mean? A barber shop, and that ain't on the list, but that's a very good place where you might get caught slipping at. I strongly suggest if you got enemies, you better go get your hair cut in your crib, in the kitchen. Okay, hire someone, one of your homeboys, something to come up in that kitchen and cut your hair, because that's the last thing you want is to get caught slipping in the barber shop. But that's not on the top five of my list for the simple fact that not everybody goes to a barbershop. The places that I'm going to be talking about, usually everybody goes there except for maybe one or two of them. But uh, for the most part, I never went to a barbershop, so I, I, ain't nobody ever going to catch me slipping in there. Anyways, like I was saying, I was watching these rap videos. Look, the rap game's all messed up, man. There's a lot of dudes out there rapping about stuff they don't even do. You know what I mean? Flashing guns, man. Flashing guns and they won't shoot nothing. The only thing they're really shooting is in the firing range. You know? For real. A lot of these guys, man, they'll be running their mouth on the track. And next thing you know, they're, they're getting ran up on by some official goons. And they just look pathetic. And, and, and the crazy thing is, is people still love them. People still glorify their music even though every freaking word that comes out their mouth is fake, man. They ain't living it. They might be a halfway crook. You know what I mean? Doing a little dirt, flipping a couple bags of weed here and there, and they think they're freaking hardcore. You know what I mean? The mind is a dangerous playground, man. A lot of individuals will start listening to music, doing a few little tiny crimes here and there, and they think they're, you know what? They're official goons. That's how it goes. And they start rapping about it. And then next thing you know, they get caught up in the mix, and then they think about their whole life. They're like, damn. You know, I don't want no parts of this. I don't want no parts of this. This ain't me. I don't know what the hell... I'm doing or they might get exposed on YouTube or any other kind of a uh, social media and they'll go quiet for a year and a half maybe two years and then boom they're back in the rap game talking crazy again thinking everyone forgot but old death ain't forget I remember that freaking video they caught you slipping dog I remember you ain't no goon I won't never listen to your freaking music that's why I listen to rappers where I feel as though they really lived it you know what I mean? They really lived it. But I mean, you can't deny the fact that they, they got they got skills. You know, they got skills. They, they sound good on track. It's good music, but at the same time, man, like, damn, just rap about something else. Don't rap about the street life because you're really not about that life, you know? So that's a piece of advice to all y'all rappers out there, man. Start rapping about something that you really do. 
You know what I mean? That you really do. But anyways, let's jump right into number five on the list. And they're not in any kind of order except for the very last one. I think the very last one is probably the most dangerous, all right? Uh, but number five on the list to get caught slipping is pumping gas. Pumping gas. Something as simple as pumping gas. Why is pumping gas so, so dangerous? I mean, I've seen so many freaking videos of people getting point blank capped in the dome piece pumping gas. Didn't even see it coming. And I got a story to go along with this pump and gas thing. Uh, I saw my homeboy one day, back in the day, back in the day when I used to carry guns and stuff like that. Uh, this, this story actually shows you how freaking stupid I was. You know what I mean? Listen to this crap. I saw my homeboy pumping gas and I thought it'd be cool just to run up on him. You know what I mean? I, get up, I got up out the car and I crouched down and ran up on him. You know what I mean? And the people, the peop there was people everywhere, broad daylight. And I had the burner in my freaking hand. And, and not only that, he could have pulled his out and shot me just because I was playing a prank on him. You know what I mean? But I got my car, ran up on him like a freak, like I'm out in the hood, ran, crouched down, ran up behind the car and, and pointed the gun right as fast. I said, gotcha, dog. Caught you slipping, didn't I? You know what I mean? And uh, he's like, man, no, 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 man. He, ain't catch he tried playing it off, right? He's like, you ain't catch me slipping. I saw you. I saw you in the mirror. He ain't see me, man. You know what I mean? But the, everyone else saw me. They're all looking at me crazy as hell. So I got my car dipped out. But that just goes to show you how freaking stupid I was, man. Just to play a prank, I could have caught a gun charge. You know what I mean? Just playing a prank on my homeboy could have costed me my life or years in the penitentiary. That's how stupid I was. But yeah, I caught his ass slipping in that gas station, man. He could deny it all he wants, you know? What do you do when you go to a gas station? You're pump, you, you grab the nozzle and pump the gas. You might be sitting there looking at the freaking thing. Or you get back in your car and twiddle your thumbs on your phone until the thing's done filling up. I mean... Is it only me that even to this day I get in my car and when I pump gas, I'm looking around? I still do that to this day, ladies and gentlemen. You can ask Brittany, okay, my wife, for anyone who doesn't know. When I pump gas, it's like my head's on a swivel. It's like I'm playing blackout and call of duty. Shit's real, man, and some things have really carried on with me from the penitentiary and the street life, and that's one of them. You know, that is one of them. Next on the list, number four is stoplights. Okay, stoplights, that's right. You know how many episodes on First 48 I've seen people get ran up on a stoplight and gunned down? Shoot, uh, Tupac, he went down at a stoplight, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, going to a stoplight, man, it's very dangerous. You know, it's very dangerous because you're, you're stuck in your car, you're at, you're at a dead stop, anyone could be following you from 20 yards back, stop right, right there, and you're done, your life's over, man. Pump 20 rounds in the car, you ain't ducking those 20 rounds, you know? That's, it's gonna, it's gonna eat through your freaking car like a soda can. You're gonna be sitting in your seat, got eight rounds in your body, you don't even know because your adrenaline's pumping, then all of a sudden you look down and then you're, you fade away, dog. You know? That's how it goes. You might think that you're all good, everything's good. Everything's good, but really you got eight holes in your freaking torso. Next thing you know, you're meeting your maker. You know what I mean? Be very careful with stoplights, especially when you're in the freaking hood, man. You know, driving down the wrong hood, that's, that's another one, but it didn't come up on the list going through the wrong hood. You know, a lot of guys, they think it stuff won't happen to them. They think they can drive, and me, you know, I remember uh, I went on a trip to New York City with Brittany, and Brittany remembers, it was like three in the morning, 2.30 in the morning, we were driving through all the freaking hoods in New York City, Queens. Look, one of the blocks that we drove past, it was like four days later, what was it? MS and uh, Latin Kings. A bunch of Latin Kings killed a few MS individuals at that street corner. It might have been the opposite way around, but the same corner that we were cruising at 2.30 in the morning at a stoplight was where all these dudes got killed. Absolutely unbelievable, man. And you know, now I'm looking back and I'm like, damn. But I still have that mentality like, hey, I'm not doing nothing. I'm not out here in the mix. Ain't nothing gonna happen to me. We, Even though I should be a lot smarter because for real, it can happen to you, man. But yeah, stopping at a stoplight, man. I remember I got out of a stoplight one time. I had a revolver in my lap. I could have pulled the revolver on this dude. And the dude that I did this to, he watches my content. And I apologize to you once again. We ended up becoming very close friends, man. But I was at a stoplight with my homeboy, Marcus. And this was a long time ago, man. This was a long time ago. Don't, don't ever think this is anything recent. And uh, someone pulled up, a girl and this dude pulled up. And the dude looked like he was talking stuff to me. I told this story before. Uh... If you haven't seen it, it's one of my old story time episodes. But I got out the car. 
Uh, I was thinking about taking my gun and putting it right in his face. And this was at broad daylight at a four-way intersection, okay? I thought about grabbing a gun and putting it straight to his face, but I didn't. I ended up getting out the car. Where are the two front cars at the, at the red light? And there's, I'm, I'm talking about there's traffic, okay? There's traffic on all around us and cars all behind us. I get out the car and I rock them. Bah! Right there, right there on the spot, man. Ended up going to jail. But it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. It's got him at a stoplight. Didn't even know the dude. Now we're actually pretty close friends. You know what I mean? So yeah, number four. Stoplight, man. You better have your head on a freaking swivel. You know what I mean? Keep your foot levitating over that gas pedal. You know? Because you never know. And you know, this isn't for everyone. This is for people uh, that, that are in that life. You know what I mean? They're in that street life or you might be one of those freaking funky halfway crooks. You know what I mean? Now, number three on the list. This one doesn't really happen to be for everyone either, but it's a very important place to not get caught slipping, okay? Let's say you're cheating in a relationship and you're sleeping with a married person, whether it's a husband or wife, and you go to their house and literally cheat on the man's bed, okay? Let's say you're sleeping with the chick on the man's bed. What are you going to do if you walk in the house and see your old lady sleeping with another man in your bed that you paid for? What are you going to do, man? You know how many individuals I've seen in the penitentiary for killing someone for the exact same scenario? And guess what? They ain't get hardly no time. You know why? Because in Virginia, it's called a crime of passion. So just keep that in your mind, man. Do not get caught slipping in another individual's house, okay? It's, it's a scary world out there. You know, you'll have girls saying, hey, uh, come on to my house. Uh, I'm not married or anything, but you go into the house, you see freaking picture frames of, uh, you know, a whole family, husband, wife, you know, husband might be wearing military clothes in the pictures or something, you know, you never know. You got to turn around, man. If you don't turn around, you're risking your life. That's all there is to it. And I can guarantee there's a lot of people out there that are going through these type of situations. They think nothing's going to happen. They're, they're trusting the person that they're sleeping with, that it's safe to go to that house, man. Look, last thing you need is to be sleeping with a married woman that might have a husband that's freaking special ops, okay? That's the last thing you need. So number three on the list, don't be doing no kind of shady cheating stuff, especially in a house that ain't yours. Now, number two, man oh man. This is very important because I know, you know, like 90% of people have been to one of these establishments, a bar or a club, okay? Number one rule, especially when you're going to clubs, and look, I was club jumping when I got out of prison non-stop, 24-7, every day of the night. I was at different club, different party area, bar, whatever you want to call it, I was in the mix. Down here in Virginia Beach, there's plenty of freaking clubs out here in the strip to go jumping around in, you know what I mean? And I cannot sit here and express it enough how many times I've seen someone get beat the hell out of because he went to the club with just his girl. If you're going to the club, you better take at least two homeboys with you. You know what I mean? Because I can guarantee there's going to be a couple groups of individuals. They're trying to get girls. They ain't getting them. Okay? They're buying drinks. They get drunk. They're getting a little angry. They're getting a little bored. They might see you with your girl. She's looking really good. And, and they might start hitting on her. And then what are you going to do? You're going to retaliate. You're going to be like, yo, back off, bro. Back off, bro. That's my girl, man. And next thing you know, guys like, man, shut the hell up. What you going to do, punk? And then everything just escalates. Okay? Everything just escalates. Alcohol, jealousy, boredom. Dudes is going to try to beat you down right there in front of your girl, man. Take a couple homeboys with you to the club, to the bar, whatever. I remember I told this story before in another old story time, man. I went to a, a bar with a girl, and uh, I didn't think anything of it because it wasn't no, like, uh, dangerous area or something, you know. And it turns out the dude that I stabbed and went to prison over, his homeboy was there, okay. His homeboy called him up, and then when I left the bar, I was surrounded. I'm talking about surrounded at gunpoint, man. I thought I was going to die that night, ladies and gentlemen. But old death made it through. That's right. I ran. <laughs> I ran. That's why I ran, boy. Look, you got to learn when to hold them and when to fold them, ladies and gentlemen. Don't make you any less of a man to run away. But yeah, if y'all haven't watched that episode, hopefully someone, I don't know, the t I can't remember the title. Hopefully someone can link it in the comment section below for people to go watch it. But yeah, I remember I ran and I came back with old Grizzy. You know what I mean? We came back fully strapped. All I needed was one homeboy, man. Out of all the homeboys I had, all I needed was one. Grizzy. 
he trained to go, man. Me and him. I can't wait till he gets out. I'm going to give y'all an update. Maybe I'll get him to call on the phone and talk to y'all a little bit in a future episode. But Grizzly's going to be coming out soon, man. You know what that means. Entertainment's about to crank up a notch or two. But yeah, man, it's my road dog. He's been with me since I was a very little kid. He tends to take things a little more on the street side. He knows that I've done jump the tracks. And I'm a family man now. You know what I mean? But still... I love him, man, and I'm trying to get him to change his ways as well. He can't seem to break it, but I believe this time is his last time in incarceration. I mean, they were trying to give him 11 years for a half of a blunt. For real, fourth violation. Trying to give him all his time back. I think that might have been his rude awakening, you know? But anyways, he's going to have a lot to look forward to when he gets out when it comes to YouTube and all that. He's already got a pretty large fan base, even though he has no social media. Now, number one on the list, and I do believe this is the most dangerous place of them all, and a lot of people think it won't never happen to them because they say, man, I ain't never getting caught up. I ain't never going there. Well, really, if you're in the streets and you're in the mix, you will. Sooner or later, you will. And sooner or later, you're going to probably see an enemy or two in there. And that is the state penitentiary, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, prison, where your nightmares become reality and there ain't no running from your freaking enemies no more. You're trapped. You're trapped in that freaking cell or cell block, at least until you scream for the police and pray it's one of those correctional officers that actually care for your safety. Because if not, you might just be losing your life. The ultimate, ultimate place to get caught slipping. State Penitentiary. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed. Please do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you did. And, and always remember, there's so many different places to get caught slipping. And, and also, you know, this, this is for people that's in the mix, okay? People that are affiliated, people that are doing dirt. You know, any uh, normal, law-abiding citizen ain't got to worry about none of this stuff unless, you know, they just happen to be at the wrong place at the wrong time bad luck and a shooter comes in into the establishment or something like that you know but other than that i mean you really have you know nothing to worry about but yes like i said hit that like button if you haven't done it already do not forget to check out all the links in the description of the video add me up on twitch twitter instagram all that social media go check out my patreon teespring where you can get all your lockdown 23 and 1 merch someone said the other day he said man i bought I've been rocking your 23 and one hoodie. People be looking at me crazy when I go into stores. I believe it, man, because everyone's like, man, what the hell does 23 and one mean? What, 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 what is that? You cl you're claiming something, dog. What is that? What, what was it? All the real cats that's been, been down in the pen, they know exactly what that saying means. So go get yourself a freaking 23 and one hoodie, man. And don't forget to go hit that subscribe button on my wife's channel as well, the compound. 24 and seven, where you see all the behind the scenes of what goes on in this house and see stuff through a woman's perspective. And if anything ever happens to me, you're gonna hear it on her channel. So go over there, check out her stuff. She has some pretty good content and I can promise you this, that's all her. You know what I mean? I'm not putting no kind of nothing into her stuff besides helping her edit, of course, but when it comes to speaking her mind, that, that's all her. And it doesn't matter if I'm saying it or my wife's saying it, all right? You can always expect 100% authenticity. And as always, I salute to every last one who's been supporting me since the beginning and everyone who is just now joining the Lockdown Compound.